everyone. Uh, Tim here, and welcome to uh, another brand new episode of Tim's Oregon Explorations. Uh, so today I am at um, the Yaquina Head um, Lighthouse Interpretive Center. Um, um, after I do that, I am going to go visit um, the actual lighthouse. Um, this will be pretty um, cool to see. Um, from what I read online, um, the lighthouse that we're going to go see later is actually uh, the tallest and um, the oldest lighthouse on the Oregon coast. So it'll be um, pretty cool to see um, another lighthouse here in, here on the Oregon coast. So it'll, it'll be neat. So please, follow me. Welcome to the Aquina Head Outstanding Natural Area. This rugged headland extends a mile out to a rocky point in the Pacific Ocean where the historic Aquina Head Lighthouse still signals ships. Aquina Head, flanked with cliffs and capped by rolling hills, offers sweeping ocean vistas and a wide range of watch watchable wildlife. So I'm going to head inside and I will see you in a few minutes. Those are cool. It's a vertebrae from a gray whale. This is a harbor seal. See, choosing the right headland, myth alleged that the Aquina Head Lighthouse was built on the wrong headland. 
not true. In 1870, Army Colonel R.S. Williamson selected this treeless headland three miles up the beach from Yaquina Bay as a lighthouse site. Among several reasons, he based this choice on its proximity by wagon road to Newport. A year earlier, George Davidson of the Coast Survey had named this bald promontory Yaquina Point and identified Cape Foulweather five miles north. Local residents, however, long referred to the Cape Foulweather Lighthouse on Yaquina Head. Not until the 20th century did it become known as the Yaquina Head Lighthouse. <laughs> Spanning the shoreline, the Quinn Head Lighthouse was the fifth of 11 lighthouses built between 1857 and 1934 in West Oregon. It became a crucial part of the U.S. Lighthouse Service planning plan to have a system of interlocking light signals, buoys, and foghorns spanning the shoreline. Uh, the tower is surmounted with a double iron gallery. The outer balcony is held up by decorative cast iron brackets. Light passes through glass, prisms, and round four plates to brighten the watch room below. An iron surface lighter leads to the upper gallery. The colonial roof has a smoke vent and lightning rod. <laughs> uh, hundreds of feet of white picket fences once enclosed the main station site. The fences kept children from falling into the sea and also confined visitors to safe areas. <laughs> This model shows the station as it looked in 1873. The light tower and oil house are all that remain of the original light station.
drive up there where it says it's like a 10 minute walk. So I'm just going to walk up there. I was originally going to drive up there, but it, it says it's just like a 10 minute walk, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to walk up there. It's good exercise. <laughs> Especially here at the coast, that's for sure. And it's beautiful today. Jefferson's vision of expanding the country's factories to the Pacific Ocean became a reality in 1848. By then, the United States had acquired both the Oregon and California territories. To help secure the new frontier, the U.S. government offered free land to homesteaders for farming and ranching. Um, in time, lighthouses and railroads would help them transport their agricultural products safely to markets in San Francisco and then on to Asia. Uh, the U.S. Lighthouse Service constructed Yaquina Head Lighthouse in 1873, one of a string of coastal lighthouses that enabled shipping traffic along the ocean highway at night. Follow the trail to the right along the lighthouse drive to visit the historic Yaquina Head Lighthouse. <laughs> Let's see, dreams of a gateway to the to the world. Look down the coast and you will see an area that once captured the imagination and hopes of Willamette farmers and business owners alike. They needed just a shortcut, a land route between the Willamette Valley and Yaquinta Bay. That became inevitable when President Andrew Johnson removed a swath of land from the Coast Indian Reservation in 1865. Initially a wagon road, the route would be developed by the Oregon Pacific Railroad and would end years of frustrating, expensive, and indirect transport of agricultural products. Harbor improvements at Yaquina Bay included the jetties still visible in the distance and Yaquina Bay Lighthouse located in the trees uh, to their left. Reflected the optimistic mood. Civic leaders dreamed of this area becoming Portland's becoming Oregon's major port, a prize ultimately won by Portland. As yeah, so this so the Bay Lighthouse was built in um, 1871. This one, uh, the one here is uh, just a little bit, it's a little bit older. Okay. Let's head up. Yeah, it was, I'm, I'm glad the weather improved. Um, it was not like this. Um, probably about 11 o'clock this morning <laughs> um, it was like really dreary it wasn't raining but it was like kind of like misty um, and uh, I actually went to uh, Depot Bay to, uh, to, to go on a whale watching tour um, um, I actually did a, it was actually a live video is what I did um, 
And if you'd like to see that video, and then if you join, if you like all all sorts of uh, you know different cetaceans, um, different whales, um, dolphins, um, I'll be sure to put a link to, to um, one of my Facebook groups. It's called Cedar Lovers Global, um, and uh, uh, feel free to join. Um, I could always use some new members. There's a lighthouse in the distance. <laughs> Yeah, and also, also be sure to put a, a link um, to that Facebook group down below in the description so you can uh, check it out for me. Yeah, but there it is. There's the lighthouse. There's a, a beautiful Pacific Ocean right here on the Oregon coast. Yeah, I'm glad I walk instead of drive. It's, no, it's a lot better. It says the white fenced area across the road was the site of a garden used by lighthouse keepers in the late 19th and early 20th uh, century. In addition to depending on supplies arriving by ship, keepers and their families relied on ingenuity, hard work, and community ethic. They hunted, fished, and worked together to tend a large garden and livestock. Holidays were celebrated together. Uh, let's see. Uh, the round water tank across the road stored uh, uh, stored spring-fed water for lighthouse keepers and their families. Before the water tank, gutters gathered rainwater off the roofs of the light station buildings, then diverted the water into underground storage systems. The fence light station garden provided an important supply of fresh vegetables. Uh, in this isolated location where traveling for supplies was difficult and deliveries were infrequent. Only the hardiest of crops could survive on such an exposed site. Keepers sometimes attach burlap bags along the fence to protect cabbage, kale, strawberries, and other garden vegetables from frequent winds. Wooden supports helped steady the fence during winter storms when winds could exceed 100 miles per hour. So, so this is where the garden used to be.
visit it. Head lighthouse. <laughs> See a string of lights. Four lighthouses, mariners sailing along the rugged west coast and anchored their ships at night dock rather than risk disaster sailing in the darkness. Beginning in the 1850s, the U.S. Lighthouse Service constructed a string of lighthouses along the west coast. Similar to eliminating mileposts on a dark highway, the lighthouses mark geographic locations to guide ships safely. Lighthouses opened the ocean highway to nighttime commerce and boosting settlement of the Pacific Northwest. Kind of faded, but we're we're right here, and I will go see um, this one, the Yakuna Bay Lighthouse, um, tomorrow, and that'll be in a, um, um, another video in addition to this one. on the Oregon Coast. 
youngest and the oldest. Special affection for the fishermen of the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> 